Worthy is the Lamb. We are delighted, we are happy to know that indeed the Lamb of God is still worthy. We are unworthy, but God is worthy. What does the church say? And because he's worthy, that is why we are in his courts tonight to lift him up, to magnify him, and to give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We want to say welcome, even though it has been said already, to our friends online. We are happy that you have joined us. To those who are here, we are delighted. We want to say thank you for your support from last week until now. What do you say? I can't hear you. Indeed, we have been doing well. We have been doing well. And we want God to continue to give us strength. We know that we are tired, but we are not tired for Jesus. What do you say? We are never, never tired for God. He gives us the help and the strength to make it in these troublesome times. Amen. So welcome everyone. And we want to say thank you all for your support. And as we get into the final word for the week, I just pray that somebody's heart will be touched. And indeed, on Sabbath, Elder Thomas, we, we want to trouble the waters. What do you say? Because persons need to know that Jesus is still in the saving business. Amen? Jesus is still in the healing business. So you are out there and you have not yet made up your mind. Tonight is your night. Sabbath is your day to say all to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely give. So let us continue praying and that God will work a miracle so that even those who never plan for it we say, I want to be a part of this baptism because I don't know if I will get another opportunity. What do you say? Tonight, our discourse comes to us from the book of Daniel. What book did I say? Daniel chapter 3. And I will read a few verses for us. We know the story. We know the passage. We have heard it many times but it never gets stale. It never gets old. What do you say? So the Bible tells us we will begin, we'll begin, we'll begin. All right, let me just begin at the beginning. All right. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. An image of what? No, man, you have to follow me. You see, curfew has been extended. So if you want me to preach till 8, 35 or 45, I can. But if you work with me, we'll be out of here on time. What do you say? All right, you're sounding a little better. So Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura. Where did he set it up? All right, you're getting warm. In the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The Bible is very clear who set it up. So the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. You see how many times the Bible repeat that part? And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fire furnace, Brother Clark. So all that time, sorry, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre in symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped 
the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. It's repeated again. How many times do you hear that in the passage? Eh? But, but, but recognize what it says here. It says that all the people, but you have to understand the language because all the people did not worship. Do we have a witness in church? But, but you see, the, all the people that were there from the other countries, they fell down and they worshiped except some people. I wish I had a witness in church. But the Bible tells us in verse 8 uh, that certain, at a certain time, that a uh, certain Chaldean, sorry, came forward. You remember the Chaldeans from, chap from chapter 2? Oh, you're sleeping on me. Came forward and accused the Jews. Mm? They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O oh, king, live forever. You, O oh, king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in harp symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews, I never say all of them, I wish I had a witness. There are certain Adventists, eh? There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, and then they didn't leave it there, Sister Nikki. They called name. I wish I had a witness. <laughs> they called name. They said Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, we call them young um, Hebrew boys, but they are men. These men, O oh king, have not paid due regard to you. Mm. <laughs> what a thing, what a thing, what a thing. These men have not paid due regard to you. They do not respect you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in rage, I hope you have your Bibles, and fury gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, is it true? Is it? This is the interrogation. I wish I had a witness. Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? But did he wait for them to answer? He said, no, if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music and you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. I wish I had a witness in church. But if you do not worship, you will be cast immediately, I wish I had a witness, into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And he didn't leave it there. If he had left it there, it wouldn't be so bad. Some of you sleeping on me. I'm going to preach till nine o'clock. I'm going to preach till 9.30. <laughs> Lord of mercy. <laughs> He's, he didn't leave it there, Elder Thomas. He didn't leave it there. He didn't leave it there. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. This, if this is, if that is the case, our God, <laughs> so you want an answer, take your answer. Our God, whom we serve, is able <laughs> to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, O king. But if not, <laughs> I wish I had more witnesses in church. But if not, uh, it, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. I wish I had witnesses in church. So he, you see, he heard that they served, they didn't serve his gods. And he, they heard that he heard that they were not bowing down to his image. But no, he did not have to hear from somebody else because the very people said it to his face. 
This tells me that these guys were not hypocrites. I wish I had a witness in church. You see, it's good to hear from other people. But now, as they stand before the king, they are saying, yes, we said it. I wish I had a witness in church. It tells me that these men knew the God whom they served and they were willing to stand up before man and declare him. You see, sometimes when some of us go out, people can't know which church we're attending or because we don't look different. We don't sound different. I wish I had a witness. Let me leave people alone. But let us pray. Lord, as we read your word, or as we have read, I pray that you will hide this instrument behind the cross. May Jesus and him only be seen high and lifted up. Use your man's servant to deliver your word to your people. They are not my words. They are coming straight from you. So Lord, help me not just I pray. But let your words go forth with power and with clarity. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say, whenever this narrative is read, we immediately say, yes, we know the story. And we rush to the end. We emphatically declare the triumph of Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah's faith in Yahweh and his subsequent deliverance of them from the fiery furnace. We are content to end the story there. Mm -hmm. Have we considered the larger context of the story? Who or what caused them to be thrown into the fiery furnace? Mm -hmm. Who was the real victor in the chapter? Was there a real victor in the chapter? In Daniel chapter 1, for context, we are introduced to these young men. They were of royal nobility. Mm, mm. But now they are captive in Babylon. And for a while, they seemed like they were no longer nobility. But nobodies. I wish I had a witness in church. In chapter 2, the king had a dream. You don't remember the story. As a matter of fact, he had many dreams. Go back and read it. But it seems one specifically troubled him. You remember the story? It caused him to lose his sleep. Elder Thomas, he called in his kubakaba, kubakaba. But they could not tell him the dream nor interpret it for him. You don't know what I'm talking about. But because they could not interpret it nor tell it to him, the king is smart, you know. He didn't forget the dream as some of you think, you know. He didn't. <laughs> That's another story. When the king is angry, he is like a dictator. He is like a despot. And hence because they could not tell him the dream, nor its interpretation, he ordered them to be killed. But it was not only the Kubakaba men. That he ordered to be killed. You don't know Kubakaba down here. He ordered good old Daniel and his friends to be killed too. No, oh, you don't remember the story. You see, they're a part of the syndicate of wise men. And hence, what went for one went for all. I wish I had more witnesses in church. So the king, in his rage, ordered them to be killed. This is a man who could not control his impulse. I wish I had more witnesses in church. And if he was reading his Bible, he would know Proverbs 25 and verse 28. I wish I had more witnesses in church. He that hath no rule over his own spirit 
is like a city that is broken down and without walls. The king had no control over himself when he lost it. When his head got hot, you don't know what I'm talking about. Nebuchadnezzar did not have the fruit of the spirit called gentleness. I wish I had a witness in church. <laughs> I wish I had a witness in church. However, Daniel and his cousins, did I say cousins? All right, that's for another time. Called on their God and the destruction was averted at least for a while. Are you following the preacher? Now we enter chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar, having heard in chapter 2 that after his kingdom, other kingdoms will arise, decided that he was going to defy God and defy himself. I wish I had more witnesses in church. He wasn't satisfied with the interpretation that Daniel gave to him. And hence, he set out to set up his own kingdom. Remember the other night we spoke about the Tower of Babel? Oh, they set up the tower down there. It's the same place in Babylon. Oh, you didn't know that. So we must understand then that man again is trying to set up his own kingdom. Mm, you're sleeping on me. But what did he do? He recognized that because he was the head of gold, he's going to set up an image of pure gold. So he's trying to reverse the dream that God gave to him. You see, God said that there would be a head of gold, but the other parts would have different metals. But Nebuchadnezzar, not wanting that to happen, set up his own image, and it was pure gold. He wanted to rule forever. Do you know somebody who wants to reign forever? Do you know somebody who wants to set up their kingdom forever? I wish I had more witnesses in church. So it was the king's intention to reign forever. But then... He got some information that led to an interrogation. And of course, based on what you answered, there are implications. I wish I had a witness in church. But even though there are implications, I am happy to know that God came and that is what we call an intervention. I wish I had a witness in church. So the king, he, dis he sent out his his men to, to pronounce uh, that he had set up an image uh, and everybody is to come and worship. The king wants worship. He wants respect uh, and he's going to demand it. And if you don't respect him, uh, he's going to kill you. I wish I had a witness in church. But you see, he must recognize uh, that even though he's going to force people to do things, uh, there are some people who will not budge uh, because they don't fear man. Uh, they fear the creator of man. But of course, after the interrogation... <laughs> After the interrogation, you know the story. I don't have to go through all of it. Eh? You know it. He, he, he decided that they would be thrown in, into what? Into the burning fiery furnace. And he decided that it was too cool for them. I wish I had a witness in church. You see, sometimes some people realize uh, that they have problems already, but they want to add to it. I wish I had a witness in church. And so he made it one time hotter. I wish I had a witness in church. He made it two times hotter. Three times hotter. Four times hotter. Five times hotter. Six times hotter. Six and a half times hotter. Six and three quarter times hotter. Seven times. But you see, he didn't recognize that when they touch number seven, he's calling on almighty God because that is God's perfect number. So you were touching God's children. <laughs> but now that you have upped the pressure, then God will have to step in. I wish I had a witness. Sometimes we murmur. And 
complain. Why me, Lord? Why do I have to be the one going through all these problems? Why so much problem bungled down for me one time? My car broke down. Me lose my job. My children are not helping me. The blood pressure is high on me. And we murmur and we complain about the tests and trials that we are going through. But I say to somebody tonight, while we believe that God is punishing us, it is not about being punished. It's about being purged. I wish I had a witness in church. So we go through purging and we think it's punishing. But God wants us to be tried in the fire because he wants us to come out like pure gold. What we see, Elder Wigan, as temptation is what God sees as transformation. I wish I had a witness in church. I wish I had more witnesses in church. Yeah, I wish I had more witnesses. Ananiah, Mishael, you realize I'm staying away from the Babylonian names. Leave Babylon. Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah stood on the promises of Christ their king while others around them fell prostrate to the Babylonian king. This is worship and that is what time will come down to. It's about who we worship. We must recognize that if man is going to take worship, we must step aside from them. And they were bold to bow down, to not bow down. They had faith in Almighty God. They knew they, what would be their F-A-T-E if, if they didn't bow to Nebuchadnezzar. But I tell you, they knew about their F-A-I-T-H if they stood tall for Almighty God. Because what? They were already on the Lord's side. And if God is on my side, I don't need to bow to a man. It is God who made man. You have title, but you are still man. I wish I had a witness in church. You have big title, but you are still man. You are seeing flesh and blood like me. So they weren't going to bow to any man. No man can give you breath. No man can breathe into your nostrils the breath of life. Eh? So they knew after the interrogation that there would be implications. I wish I had a witness in church. But you see, I want us to recognize something here. That, that, that there, were, there are some things in this in life, uh, in Nebuchadnezzar's life, sorry, that prevented him from seeing God. Follow the preacher, follow the preacher. There, are, there were some things uh, in his life uh, that prevented him from seeing God. One of those was pride. He was full of pride. He was puffed up. He was pumped up. But I want to let you know, it doesn't matter how you puff up and pump up. When God is ready, he can just touch you and deflate you like a balloon. I wish I had a witness in church. But let me say this to us. When God wants to get our attention... He will use any means necessary. Remember Moses, God used the burning fiery shrub. Mm? There were many shrubs around. It, it was just a regular shrub. But this one was burning and it didn't burn out. Not true. God got his attention. He used the dream in Daniel chapter 2 to get Nebuchadnezzar's attention. But it wasn't successful. Hence, he used three young men in the fire to clear the way. Now, when Nebuchadnezzar told them to heat it up seven times hotter, even the men who threw them in died. Sinners cannot stand before God. Because, you see, God was already in the fire, I wish I had a witness in church. So when they went there and they threw them in, they died. 
But now, when the, you know the story, when the king looks in the fire, he does not see three. I wish I had a witness in church. Uh, if he wore glasses, Elder Thomas, uh, he must have called for them because he had to put them on and look good. He remembered that three went in. But now that he's looking in, he's seen three plus one. What a God we serve. Because you see, he's looking in the fire to see the guys get burned. He's looking in the fire to see them melt down to ashes. You see, people will put fire and problems in your life to watch you go right down. But while they are looking for you to be shrinking, while they are looking for you to be diminishing, I wish I had a witness, while they are looking for you, till them can't see you, instead of them burning, they were smiling. Instead of them burning, they were worshiping. I wish I had a witness in church. Instead of them crying, they were clapping. I wish I had a witness in church. Instead of them giving up, they were standing on the promises of God. Instead of them complaining, they were praying. Instead of them cussing out church leaders and saying they're not going to look for them. Instead of them cussing out Daniel and ask where him they when they need him now. I say to somebody tonight, recognize the God whom you serve. Recognize he is bigger than man. Nobody can stand in your way when God is by your side. He had to call them out. <laughs> the same moat that ordered for them to go in is the same moat that to call them out. Some of us are afraid of people moat too much. We are afraid every time people say something, we quail up like she and Maka. The same moat that condemned them is the same moat of to call them back out. Because God is not playing around. Don't you trouble Zion. Don't you touch uh, God's people. Don't trouble God's people. Of course, when he called, the son of God didn't come out the fire because he doesn't answer to Nebuchadnezzar. I wish I had a witness in church. <laughs> you see, there were four, but only three came out when he called. Not true. And it's the three that he had put in. He didn't put God in there so he can't call God out of there. I wish I had a witness in church. I wish I had a witness in church. These young men, they knew who to obey. They knew whose command to follow. They know when to follow God than when to follow man. And I want to make a point to some persons. It wasn't about the musical instruments being played. It was about to whom they were being played. I wish I had a witness in church. You see, there are some persons who are afraid of musical instruments. It doesn't matter as long as you play them to the honor and glory of God. So Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to bow. But instead, God used the three of them to get him to bow. I wish I had a witness in church. He wanted, you, you see, there is sometimes uh, we, we struggle with these things uh, and we say that was them, but we can't do it. I said it's the same God that they serve, uh, that we serve now. So as I said earlier, at times we tend to think the narrative, the narrative is about the three Hebrew boys. May I suggest to us tonight that the narrative really is about Nebuchadnezzar and Yahweh. The narrative is really 
about God struggling with King Nebuchadnezzar for him to realize who is in control. And if you follow the wider context, you will find it. Because in the next chapter, he will have to bow and reverence God. I wish I had more witnesses. He used instruments to build up to the climax of them bowing and worshiping him. Not true. Liar and all sort of something. But God used these men as his instruments in the fiery furnace to get Nebuchadnezzar to acknowledge him as the true and only one who is to be worshipped. So they were God's instruments to get to the king. I wish I had a witness. He used musical instruments to get to them to bow. But God used them as his instruments to reach the king. All right, go on through on that one. But notice, it was only when they were in the fiery furnace that Nebuchadnezzar could see their God. I wish I had a witness in church. He heard that his kingdom would not last forever. And he gave Daniel's God lip service in chapter 2. Are you giving lip service to God tonight? In chapter 3 now, he didn't get only a dream. He saw a physical manifestation. God is trying to communicate to the king that there is only one man in charge. Hmm. Them being in the fire, Nebuchadnezzar is now focused. And because he's now focused, he can see God. I wish I had a witness in church. Hmm. Some of us, we are not focused. There are some people who are not focused. And God has to use us, his people sometimes, as instruments to reach them. I wish I had a witness in church. They are in a strange country. They are in a strange land. They are among strange people. But they will not worship strange gods. I wish I had a witness in church. You see, Nebuchadnezzar, used fire to form his God. That's one reason for the furnace, you know. That's where they did the smelting. So he would have used that to form his God. And then he would have taken his God out of the furnace and put him on the plain of Dura. But now the children of Israel, their God, who created them. I wish I had a witness. He went in to the fiery furnace to take them out. I wish I had a witness in church. So God is reversing what Nebuchadnezzar is doing. Hmm. So the very thing that he used to form his God, he wanted to use it to destroy God's people. But because he heated it seven times, have mercy. <laughs> because he touched uh, the perfect number, God had to intervene. Gabriel, this one is not for you. Jesus himself. And when God touches down, the enemy has to take himself away. The enemy was preparing to clap. I wish I had a witness. The enemy was preparing to jump and dance. The enemy was saying, yes, I'm going to get rid of them. But while he was there waiting to rejoice, him see a little light coming. And when him look, it is the sun of God himself. When he saw him, he had to run. And hence, when the young men went into the fire, it was as if you turn on AC and them. The only thing that burned was Babylon's rope. 
Some of us, we are afraid of Babylon's rope. Some of us, we are afraid of the things of Babylon. But you see, they did not put Babylon rope on themselves. It's Babylon put the rope on them. And hence now God allowed that to burn off them and set them free. I'm saying to somebody tonight, uh, it doesn't matter what you believe is holding you down. Uh, it doesn't matter what you believe is holding you back. Uh, when God steps in, uh, all enemies have to flee. He used fire to exalt his God. Mm -hmm. To form him and then exalt him. Not true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to force others to worship him with the threat of death. On the other hand, the fire was seven times hotter. Yeah. That's when the God of the Jews went into it and delivered his trophies. Then they got exalted. I wish I had a witness in church. You see, he wanted his God. But God wasn't into that. God exalted his trophies. God exalted his people. I say to us, it is time to stop being afraid of Babylon. It is time to stop being afraid of Babylon's king. We must recognize that, that what, if God has his hands on you, no power in hell can take it off. It doesn't matter to them if they were in Babylon or in Jerusalem. The same God that they had in Jerusalem is the same God over here in Babylon. He's not weaker because he had to travel to Babylon. I wish I had a witness in church. He never get tired because of the long journey to Babylon. As a matter of fact, they didn't have to make an image and take to Babylon because the earth is the Lord's. So even in Babylon, God is there. What a God we serve. He wanted to be worshipped and exalted, but he ended up worshipping God and exalting him along with his servants. God used them as instruments to give instructions. Hmm? He wanted to save the heathen king from destruction. That was God's intention. Hmm? What a God we serve. What a God we serve. We don't worship your gods. We don't worship your image. You have made your God. But our God have made us. <laughs> what a God we serve. I said to God's people tonight. It doesn't matter your situation. God is still in control. It doesn't matter the trials that you are going through. It's just preparation for what is to come. Because God knows uh, that we'll be going through trying times. Uh, hence, he's preparing us instead of running from it. Stand up and let God work on your life. But God is still amazing. It is not about the three Hebrew young men alone. God wanted to reach the heathen king. It simply tells me it doesn't matter where they are or who they are. God still sees them as a candidate for the kingdom. Let us not write off anybody. Let us not turn our backs on anybody. Every soul on this earth is a potential candidate for heaven. Yes, he worshiped false gods. Yes, he set up and created false gods. But the true God of glory came down to reach even one. What a God we serve. Tonight, God is saying to somebody, I want to reach you. Tonight, he's saying to somebody, I want to save you. Tonight, he's saying to somebody, let go. You have been focusing elsewhere. Keep your eyes on me. And when our eyes are affixed upon Jesus, 
then we will start seeing the challenges in our lives being fixed. But sometimes when the problems are upon us too much, we turn our eyes elsewhere. I wish I had a witness. Some of us, our strange gods, are the people we are visiting after dark. I wish I had a witness in church. Some of us, our strange gods, is the little oil where we have sprinkling all over the place. Some of us, our strange gods, is the oil that we're rubbing up with. Saying, I don't know what we're doing with it. But I'm saying to you tonight, there's a God who can offer you the oil of salvation. There's a God who has the oil of the Holy Spirit to pour down upon you. There's a God tonight who has deliverance for you. You don't have to go elsewhere to seek deliverance. You don't have to cut our forehead to seek deliverance. You don't have to go to anybody with flagging yard to seek deliverance. Call on the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, they run into it and they are saved. Tonight, somebody needs to remember that Jesus is alive. Somebody needs to remember that God will come through. You see, he did not come when they were being interrogated. I wish I had a witness. He did not come when the informers were talking about them. I wish I had a witness. He did not come when the king was upset. I wish I had a witness. He came when they were in the fire because our God is a big God. He's not going to come fight the small battle. He's going to come and fight the hottest battle. Because the hotter the battle, <laughs> the hotter the battle, the hotter the battle. What a God we serve. Some of us were afraid of fire. Don't be afraid of fire, man. Our God is a consuming fire. The fire that man builds is nothing in comparison to the fire that God can use. And they were there and they felt nothing. Because there was nothing between their souls and the Savior. Tonight I say to somebody, reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Almighty God. You are struggling. You are going through some terrible times in your life. Turn it over to Jesus. You think that God has given up on you? No, he's giving you another chance to make it right. Surrender your life to Jesus. Before you die, seek the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar was stubborn. But eventually God reached him and got to him and turned his life around. The same can happen to you. The same can happen to you. So tonight, dear brothers and sisters, let Jesus take control. Remember, it doesn't matter what people say. The king was hot, fire, furious. He was cross. He was angry. He was miserable. But that did not frighten God's people. That did not frighten God. Because his God make him. And if his God make him, God can cool him. I wish I had a witness. May God bless us as we worship him in the beauty of holiness. God delivers again. Oh, my God delivers again. You see, when it seems like all is lost, he reaches down his hands. That's when all oh, the forces, forces of evil have to flee at his command. Oh, now just when things are hopeless,
Nebuchadnezzar, Lord, want the three bull boys to bow down and worship him, but they stood out, and you said if we stand for you, you will stand for us. And so, God, as they stood for you, God, you deliver them, and I praise God this evening. And they are our example to follow, Lord. Nothing else, Lord, will bow down, no matter what, because God is our provider. God is our sustainer. God is our rock in the we hide tonight, a shelter in the time of storm, mighty God. And Father, you said, think it not strange, the fiery tries to try us, but we are to rejoice. We'll go through the fire, but we have to remember that God is with us. You promise that you'll never leave us. You promise that you'll never forsake us, oh God. And we thank you for who you are. Lord, we lift up our our highs to you from whence come up our help or oh, come it from you may the heavens and the earth 
And so God, trouble someone's conscience this evening. Worry them, Lord. Even when they lie down to sleep tonight, they can't sleep. Because they are torment. the word of God is just ringing in their ears, reminding what pastor have said tonight, God. Father God, I pray, God, that they will say goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you because the enemy come to rob, to kill and to steal. But you come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus tonight, we pray for deliverance. Then, Lord, into your hands we put those who are sick with cancer. There's a request for somebody with cancer. But, God, we know who you are, the healer. The bomb in Gilead, the sympathizing Jesus, arthritis, pain in the head, pain in the neck, pain in the knee, pain all over the body, whatever the sickness is, oh God, you are Dr. Jesus tonight. All we have to do, cry out to you and say, Lord of mercy, remember your daughter, remember your son, and you will hear. For dear God, no sickness and sorrow on earth that heaven cannot heal. Mighty God, whatever is our need, financial needs, whatever it is, oh God, our God is a provider. David said he was young, now he's old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see begging bread. And Father God, you provide for the bird, the sparrow that fly, the grass in the field. You say, oh God, even us who are so important, you created us to worship you, Lord. And we have to have faith in you, trust in you, God, because you always will provide. So into your hands, we commit tonight's service. Thank you again for the word. Thank you again for the working of the Holy Spirit. Bless our pastor again. Bless his family. Bless Elder Thomas. And come to use them in a mighty way, Lord. And help them, oh God, as a minister to others, oh God. They will not be a castaway. But when thou shalt come, all of us, oh God, will say welcome. Good and faithful servant. You will say, welcome, good and faithful servant. Entered into the joy of the Lord. So help us to be faithful. Help us to be true. Until you come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. <laughs>